everybody, welcome back to Journey to VR. So last week I showed you guys how we could get texture geometry from Maya into Unity. So now we're ready to start doing some character-based workflows. This week we're gonna concentrate in on character rigging. The next few weeks we'll talk about retargeting motion capture data and getting all that animation data into Unity. So for this week, again, we're gonna concentrate in on rigging and specifically using the quick rig tool to get this guy ready to, uh, to animate. So what we've got here is we've got this little dude and we want to, to get a rig on him. The fastest and easiest way to do that is to use the quick rig tool, which is awesome for VR and AR workflows because it allows you to very, very quickly get up to speed, even if you have limited knowledge of how to do character-based workflows. So instead of doing the auto rig, which is just a single click rigging, I'm gonna go through step by step and show you what that auto rigger is actually doing or that quick rigger is actually doing. So we'll go to step by step. And the first thing we need to do is create a new character. So we'll just click the plus sign to do that. Now that we've got our character in our scene, the next thing we need to do is add in some geometry for that quick rig tool to work with. So go to the geometry tab, and again, just click that plus button. So we'll add all those nodes into our selection. So now that we've done that, the next step is to generate guides. Guides are gonna be placer nodes that ultimately drive the creation of the skeleton and the, uh, and the rig. So there's a few options inside of here. If you expand this guide settings out, there's options for how many spine joints there are. And this is actually pretty useful, um, especially if you were using something like the humanoid node inside of Unity. Unity has its built-in animation system for blending between character clips. It's all based on this humanoid workflow. And the humanoid has a very specific set of bones inside of Unity that they're looking for. Two spine bones, things like that. And a root bone for, uh, for root translation on the hip. So you can set the guides up to work with that very elegantly. For my demo, um, I'm gonna be animating everything inside of Maya. I don't need to worry about the humanoid animation system inside of Unity. So we're just gonna leave these at the defaults because three spine joints will actually look a little bit better. So we're gonna leave those guys where they are and we're just gonna go ahead and create those guides. So click the create button. Maya goes through, it evaluates all the geometry and it figures out uh, a good idea of where those bones should be placed. Now there's gonna be times where it doesn't get it exactly right and you wanna modify those. So that's what the user adjustments section is for. So I can grab this bone on his elbow that obviously isn't where it needs to be, reposition that guy, hit the F key to kind of frame in on it so you can see that it looks, uh, looks pretty good there. And now I just need to mirror that work over to the other side. So we'll do that by just clicking the mirror button. And now you can see if we select both of those that they are in the, uh, the same spot. So that's looking pretty good. Let's move on to the next step, which is to generate the skeleton. And in this example, I'm gonna tell it to generate the skeleton and the control rig. So this is gonna go ahead and create um, an HIK rig on top of it. So it makes the bones, the bones get bound. Um, ultimately to the joints or to the to the geometry. And right now we've got this HIK rig on top of that guy, which is an awesome way of animating, especially if you're doing retargeting. And we'll be diving into that more in detail in the next demo. So um, let's go ahead and jump to the last section, which is a skinning section. So we wanna just go ahead and make a relationship between that skeleton that was generated and all the geometry. And we're gonna be using the geodesic voxel binder. Again, something that's been uh, relatively new inside of Maya, but super, super cool. It's a great skinning um, system, specifically when you have um, things like geometry that isn't exactly the same meshes, like areas around here where you wanna make sure that they get the same weighting across those multiple pieces of geometry. Geodesic voxel binding does a really, really great job of that. So now that we've got to kind of have our, our rig in there, our skeleton in there, we'll do our last step, which is making that relationship between those, uh, those joints and those meshes. It goes through and it does that. And now you can see that we basically have a really nice little rig here. And this is using, again, that HIK rig. So what does that mean? Well, an IK uh, handle, if you're in body part mode in, in the control rig, behaves pretty similarly. You know, when you overextend that arm, it basically stops at the uh, rotational values of that body part. If you go into HIK mode or full body mode, you'll see that as I overextend that arm, it can actually transfer that energy all the way through the skeleton. And this is an awesome way of animating. It's a full body inverse kinematic solver. It has the ability to do FK and IK to position your character, which is, uh, which is really great when it comes time to animate your character. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna change the display of this a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the effect of those IK handles or those, those FK bones. I've got my rig look set to um, be the box setting, which I really like these little boxes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the skeleton preview of that guy, the X-ray preview of that guy. And I just wanna grab all those IK handles, which are basically boxes, controllers or effectors. And I'm just gonna kind of scale those guys up to try to get them looking, uh, looking pretty cool. We'll grab his head 
and we'll scale that box up also so that it sort of wraps around the outside edge of our character. Now there's a few of these that I want to get a little bit bigger, you know, specifically around his heels here. We'll grab these two guys and kind of scale those up. No, looks like I didn't grab that one too. Let's grab that one and scale both those up. Now, if we look down our side here, you can see that these guys are basically not really positioned where I want them to be. Those are the toe controllers. So to change the position of those, those handles, we can just jump into the attribute editor and in the attribute editor, we can close that down now. In the attribute editor, there's these translation offsets. So if I grab one of these guys and I just use a translate offset in my, um, in my Z to kind of push that forward, you know, it looks pretty cool, but I didn't grab both of them. So if you want to move multiple objects at the same time, you can always do that in the channel box. The problem is, and this is a pretty good tip here, the channel box has a limited filter set of what's going to be keyable or visible. So what we want to do is we want to get that translate offset on those, on those handles added into the channel box so that I can move multiple uh, translate offset values at the same time. So how do you do that? Well, you basically just go into edit, and go to channel control, and in the channel control, you now have your list of what's visible and what's not visible. So we'll just kind of scroll down here toward the bottom. We'll just grab translate offset, and we'll move that over into the visible tab. And now you can see that I have translate offset visible for all of my handles. So with both of those guys selected, I can now push those up in Y a little bit, and kind of scale, push those out in Z ever so slightly, and then maybe just scale those little, little, those little toe boxes down, you know, to something kind of like that. So now I have, these handles, these IK handles, really easily visible around the outside of my character. But the problem is, if I wanted to use pick walking, if I click the up arrow key and I'm on that hand, it doesn't pick walk up to the elbow. So what we want to do is we want to take all of these controllers and all these IK handles and tag them as controllers. So this is something that was added relatively recently into Maya, and it gives you the ability to to set control systems up and establish a pick walking hierarchy, which is super, super cool. So we're gonna tag all those IK handles, these boxes, as controllers. So as soon as we tag all those guys as controllers, if we look at this in the attribute editor, you'll see there's a new, uh, a new node added on here that's just called um, you know, head effector, and then it's got an underscore tag in there. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So what we wanna do is we wanna start making parent-child relationships between these. So I want this, controller to be a child of that guy. So we'll just select him and we'll go to controller and we'll just say parent controller. So now if I grab this hand and I click my up arrow key, instead of jumping up to the reference node, the root of the folder structure, it's going to look to the controller hierarchy. So I can use my up and down arrow keys to jump back and forth between the elbow and the hand, which is super, super cool. So again, I can just do a simple parent child relationship. So just grab that guy, go to controller and say, control as parent, then I can do the same thing on, on this, on the, the shoulder box here. So we'll say can, uh, controller, um, parent it. And then we're gonna do the same thing down this arm. So we'll grab this guy, we'll add that in as a parent controller, we'll grab this one to that one. Again, we'll just do that parent controller and then we'll grab this guy to this guy and we'll say controller, parent. Now I wanna take this guy and just offset it a little bit. You know, let's go back to its, uh, back to its properties. And we'll just translate this up a little bit. That's his, uh, that's his shoulder box there. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We can kind of scale that down ever so slightly. So now that I've got that set, I can use my up and down arrow keys to jump through my hierarchy. Pretty awesome. And if I use my left right arrow keys, it lets me jump over to the mirrored side. So you can see how quickly I can navigate through this character control rig using that custom parenting setup that we just set up. So this is really awesome, especially when you have things like hands and feet or body limbs, you know, the ability to jump around that hierarchy using the arrow keys is just really, really cool. So the last thing I wanna show you, which was newly added in 2018, is a new visibility flag that's added to these controllers where you can say visible only when my mouse is close to it. So if we turn this on, you can see that this hand's visible, but that becomes visible when my mouse gets close to it. So what we wanna do is we wanna take all of those controllers that we just made and have them get that same effect. So how do you do that? Well, you use the magic of Mel. Mel is the greatest thing in the world because it allows you to take something like a, a command and really simply with a few lines of Mel, run it on a, a selection of objects. So I've already wrote a little script to do this. So what the script does is it basically says, define a new ver uh, new string, my selection. So, you know, pretty much is equal to my selection. And then it's going to, it's going to run through that selection list. And for each one of those selections, it's going to do a set adder. We're going to set the attribute and we're going to annotate to the name of our selection 
underscore tag dot visibility. And then we're gonna set that attribute to two, which was the second list in, um, in that, which means invisible. So all I do is hit my uh, return key on that guy, it runs through, and now I have a rig that basically displays when my mouse is close to it and disappears when my mouse is far away. And that's, that's super, super awesome. So those are uh, a few examples of things that you can do to really quickly get a rig that has the ability to be navigated using your arrow keys and has this cool new um, kind of auto display setup done that was again added in 2018. So now that we've done that, the um, next demo that I'm gonna show you guys, which will um, be basically working with this HIK rig to do retargeting of motion capture data. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you're taking the time to watch this video on YouTube or on Vimeo, make sure you go back to the area. On the area, there is a Journey to VR blog, and in that blog, I've recorded many, many demos showing how to use Max and Maya, as well as game engines to do VR and AR workflows. We also have a big, big collection of written articles put together that are basically interviews with our customers and thought leaders about what they think is super cool about VR and AR. So make sure you go back to that Journey to VR uh, blog on the area. Thanks again so much for taking the time to check this all out. Cheers, everybody.